Supreme Chancellor Obi Wan Kenobi by Stone Feek. Chapter 25 Cody talks to Yoda. Cody knows his general and his tells. He's been by his side long enough to have developed a keen eye for all of the almost invisible signs that General Kenobi is exhausted. It's the small twitch in his eyebrows when he needs to read, the way his fingers twitch while his hands stay clasped behind his back, the way he'll cover his mouth, pretending to stroke his beard, to keep in a yawn. Million small signs, not that General Kenobi would ever admit to them. Yeah, Cody has seen his general exhausted before. Usually, they manage to find some time for him to catch up on sleep and rest, even in the middle of active war zones. So what is it that his general seems to be the most exhausted he's ever been? If you ignore the assassination attempts, which Cody absolutely does not, though his general is, as always, frustratingly blasé about them. Coruscant is, in general, a lot safer than anywhere else they've been the last couple of months. And still, the exhaustion signs don't go away. In fact, they only grow worse. When Cody catches General Kenobi almost nodding off at his desk, he knows things are really bad. They've seen him lie on the couch through the surveillance monitors, but if he's this tired, then there's no way he's actually sleeping or resting. They tried to make their presence more obvious, to make it clear that he could relax because they're there, they have his back. It doesn't work. The general keeps working, taking meditation breaks and heading back to the temple during most nights, but the exhaustion doesn't let up. It's Waxer who comes up with the idea of talking to General Yoda about it. It feels like going behind General Kenobi's back, but Cody knows they have to do something. It can't go on like this. Cody tries to calm his conscience with the knowledge that in Jedi terms, General Yoda is a bit like General Kenobi's great-grandfather. Family. Cody doesn't know a lot of Jedi lineage, but he understands it as being the closest thing Jedi have to family. Aside from their whole community. Going to General Yoda isn't going behind General Kenobi's back. It's their way of helping. By asking family for help. Their only other option would be General Skywalker, and they... No, that's a bad idea. Even though Cody knows that it needs to be done, even though he's justified it to himself, setting up a meeting with General Yoda still leaves a bit of a lump in Cody's stomach. It still kind of feels like betraying the General's trust, even though they haven't been bound to secrecy. They haven't even talked about it. The General really is way too good at changing the subject. Walking through the Jedi Temple alone feels vaguely uncomfortable. Weird. But Cody knows that his general trusts him to watch his back, so Cody will do so, even if this is in a different way than usual. Tired he is? Surprised by this, Yoda is not. Carried heavy burdens, Obi-Wan has always done. Some of his own making, many by others. To him, given. Refused to complain, he always has. Important to Obi-Wan, duty has always been. Swords of exhaustion remain constant, General. Cody glances off to the side before back to Yoda. He turns. We don't think General Kenobi is sleeping, or if he is, then not well. Surprised? I'm not. Speak with him, will I? Taps his cane against the floor, Yoda does. Thank you, I do. Care for your General, Yoda. Grateful for your loyalty, which Jedi are. Thank you, General. Embarrassed, the commander seems. Flushed and embarrassed he is. A good heart, has he? Pleased, Yoda is, that surrounded by good men, his great-grand-padawan is. A whisper in the forest, Yoda feels, and smile he does. Bring a pedal, I run. Bring it, has he? Does, General, he does. They say their goodbyes, and the commander leaves. Much to do now, Yoda has. To the quartermaster office, first he will go. Much experience with unruly crashlings who cannot sleep. He has older, perhaps, but still young. His great-grand-pet one is much different. It should not be. 